here I am back at the wall for another daily update. As you can see behind me over there, Kim is up there painting the sign. Um, John's working on his cows still and there's not a lot to be seen because it's, it's mostly fine detail work going on. However, um, Kim has been responsible for some of this painting, including the sky, and she's taken on responsibility of uh, restoring the lovely sign on the wall. Many of you have asked if that's coming or going because they saw it looking rather tatty. But the answer is it is definitely staying. Kim's up there doing it now and we'll be talking to her and to John later in the day to see what's been going on. Here I am with Kim Cole's up a ladder. So, Kim, how are you doing up there? I'm all right. Good, good. Thank you. We have many people saying, is the sign coming down? Is the sign staying up? And the answer is most definitely, the sign is um, staying up, isn't it? It is definitely staying up. We did originally plan on taking it down, but um, there's several reasons why that didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And we decided to refurbish it instead, partly because it's been here for, I don't know, nearly 40 years. Yeah. So it's definitely part of the landscape, very recognisable. And it just, I think it kind of adds to it, tells people it's a corner store. It does. And it's probably less work refurbishing it than trying to clean up whatever's going on behind here. So yes, and it would have been a bit of a big blue patch of sky anyway. It would have been it? a big blue patch of sky, yeah. I personally think it actually sets it off really nicely. Yeah, I quite like it. For me as well, I mean, I've lived here for 30 something years and it's been here forever. Like I've never known this wall without the sign. So it'd be very strange for it to suddenly be gone. And we had lots of people saying, please don't take the sign down. We love the sign. You can't take it down. It's part of the history. So we are listening to those people and we are not taking it down. Yeah, I think it sets it off. It just gives the whole thing. Just that look, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, no, I am a fan. Not a fan of the straight lines I have to paint, though. No, your, I was going to say, your <laughs> sign writing skills are, are going up. It's a learning curve. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm cheating because it's um, on there already. It's not like I have to actually make up the letters. It's more like painting by numbers, to be honest. I kind of have to fill in some gaps where the paint's all worn off. I'll have to, the, the top bit, the, the paint was so worn off that when we sanded it, you can't really see the letters at all. No. So we'll have to draw that out again. But I've got a trick up my sleeve where I'm going to print out the font and then transfer the outline onto the board for me to work with because I'm definitely not a sign writer. It is an absolute skill that takes years to learn and I have not learnt it. If I'm just colouring in shapes, I think I can manage just about. And it's quite satisfying actually. I'm enjoying it. I've got to say, the, the response to this artwork has been amazing over the last few days, haven't they? <laughs> it definitely has. We've oh, had, um... Have you ever had responses like this to any other artwork you put up? Not to the same extent. I think the most popular ones in the past have probably been the one on the Globe Inn, which was done by Oksana. Yeah. That got a very good response. <laughs> but I think the difference is that was painted before the mural trail was launched. Now that we have an established following on social media, you already have a base reach, which then gets shared, whereas Oksana's got painted before that existed. So, um, but no, it's definitely been the most popular by far, but I mean, nobody can not love John's work and the cows. Well, it's all about the cows. Everybody loves the cows. Glastonbury used to be all about the tour. No, now it's all the tour. About the it's all about the cows. Everybody loves the cows. Absolutely, the cows are where it's at. I think what's nice about this mural is it's it's not 
in the touristy centre part of town. It's in the bit where it's actually the community that benefits from it. Absolutely. It's the residents, it's the people who've lived here for years who might not even really get involved in the kind of alternative town centre where a lot of John other murals exist. So it's like reaching a whole new demographic of people. And it's just nice to kind of include them and see them so happy with um, with something that we're creating because I think sometimes they get a little bit left out with the stuff that gets done yes, in I other parts right. of town. But no, it, they love it. The red, there's, we met the lady who lives opposite. She was really happy and she says she's been watching out her kitchen window as it's being painted. So I mean, I can't believe that John even gets any work done with the amount of people that are stuffing and talking to him. I know, I mean, virtually every other car stops. Yeah, and every person. Yeah. It's been great, really great. I'm really happy that people are enjoying it and it's exactly why we do this. I mean, actually, I do it because I want it here, but it's nice that other people want it too. You mentioned the, the Oksana painting over at the pub there. What's going to be done about the graffiti on it? Um, well, it's not extreme. It's just a white cross, so I'm hoping that actually John is going to help me repair it. We're just waiting until we have some time. The main challenge will be colour matching because the way Oksana paints is she kind of paints and mixes colours as she goes, so it's, it's not as simple as just finding the right colour and painting over it. But John's very talented, as we can all see. We, and we, we noticed that. And I'm, I'm guessing he won't have too much trouble because it's quite simple. Excellent, excellent. I'll come down and take some pictures when you do. Go for it. Right, well, I'm going to love you and leave you to it because there's a lot of letters there and it's getting There on. is a lot of letters. I don't think I'll be finishing these letters today. No. I might try and finish the word vegetables. Vegetables. And leave it. Although I think John wants to go home and we've got to put the ladder away. Yes, yeah, so. he is over there looking rather wistful, isn't he? So I'm going to actually go and <laughs> take the opportunity to interview him and have a quick chat with John. And then, Surely um, not. John, you want to talk to John? What do you want to talk to him for? Well, I, I know he's only the assistant on this project, <laughs> but, you know... I know, it's the sign. The sign is really the piece that is the It's source. the demography. We like to keep things equal around here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. You're Thanks, a star. Thanks, Gabriel. Nice to see you. So here I am back with the man of the moment, Mr. John Minshew. Hello, John. Hi, Gabriel. Um, we've not filmed you much today because the work you've been doing on the cows there is largely detailing work. So to the untrained eye, and I include myself very much in that, it doesn't look any different from yesterday. So we've kind of left you alone, but uh, loads of work has been going on. You've been working on those cows all day, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, after the first um, blocking in, I have to then go back and modify and adjust and constantly adjust to get all the angles right, proportions right, and things like that. So it's actually the kind of the most crucial time for actually refining artwork. So for me, it looks totally different from yesterday. Mm. So what's it been like working under Kim, literally? <laughs> it's always great to work with Kim. She's a great uh, uh, enthusiastic um, companion for all creative endeavor. Isn't she? I, c I can tell from just looking at this, you have a, a deep love of nature and wildlife. Yeah, that's right. Which leads me on to my next question. I understand you're the custodian of some rainforest in um, Central America. Central America. Right. Tell me about that and the reason why you do it. Well, um, I basically gave up teaching in 2000 and I wanted to follow in the footsteps of Gauguin in the sense of trying to find a kind of a, a paradise, mm -hmm. uh, a raw paradise. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I went over to Costa Rica and um, found the perfect opportunity, a beautiful piece of land which has got uh, a lot of rainforest, so that's protected now and has re reserve status. Mm -hmm. And I spend as much time as I can out there looking after it and um, uh, basically creating gardens and painting. And, yeah. Amazing. And does it influence your work at all, the, with the time you spend out there? It must have It, it does influence my easel work, you know, my, mm. my paintings that I do, because I, I like to work um, 
with symbolism and a lot of images of natural things like flowers and uh, shells and things and that's a great source over in Costa Rica for that. Mm. Well thank you for looking after an albeit small part of our world but long may you continue to do so. Thanks Gabriel. So I'm going to call it a day for now and we'll come back tomorrow afternoon and catch up with you and see what's happened then. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, John. Bye, Gabriel.